and the family and I have talked to Senator Cory Booker about it. All roads lead to legislation. We are not going to stop until legislation is signed. Martin Luther King III and Andrea Waters Kings of the Drum Major Institute and Nash Action Network is calling for tens of thousands to meet us in Washington on August 26th around continuing the dream, protecting the dream, including the George Floyd bill, which is why we had many of the families fly in. So this is not the end of a funeral, but the beginning of a movement around legislation. As the McCarthy meets with the president on the national debt ceiling, we're going to engage them on the debt owed black America. The Congressional, the Congressional Black Caucus has invited the family and us to the State of the Union. We do know the state of our community, and we intend to be diligent about it. I bring Ben Crump, and uh, as Spike and I had to slip out, because we're trying to get back through this ice. But uh, we want to hear Attorney General Bill, Ben Crump. I cannot but say thank you enough to Reverend Al Sharpton for answering the bell. So thank you, Rev, yet again for answering the bell, as you have done so many times. Also, we have uh, Attorney Chris O'Neill, one of my law partners, and Attorney Sarah Reach, who is uh, with Attorney Ramanucci's office. It's a team effort to get justice, and we need all of us, us fighting in the courtroom, us fighting outside of the courtroom, us fighting in the pulpits. Uh, and so, Rev and Jamal, all, all the preachers, we're, we need all of us to finally, finally get this reform. Remember, we have to be students of history. We have not had systematic police reform since Lyndon Bain Johnson in the Great Society. That was in the 1960s. Uh, Rodney King, it didn't happen. Didn't happen for Michael Brown and Ferguson during President Obama's administration. Did not happen for George Floyd. I mean, how many videos do we have to show you, America, before we say we have a problem? It's the culture. It's the culture. It's not whether the officer is black, Hispanic, or white. Now, it's the institutionalized police culture that says it is acceptable to engage in excessive use of force on black and brown citizens. And we can show you exhibit after exhibit after exhibit. Uh, Attorney O'Neill, Attorney Reach, uh, Pastor Jamal, and Pastor Turner, We'll try to take some of your questions, if y'all have any. If you don't have any, I can get to the family. Yes, ma'am. You know, it's so significant to show America that these are not isolated incidents. For years, for decades, they would say when black people say the police brutalized us, nah, we think y'all just exaggerate and y'all malingering and so forth. We can have scars and bruises, but it didn't matter until we got video. That was the game changer. I told Madam Vice President, I said, whatever we do, we got to continue to fund body cam video because we got to be able to see what's happening. Transparency is the only thing we can depend on. You won't need me to interpret it for you. You won't need Pastor Brown or Pastor Turner, nobody to interpret it for you. You can see it with your own eyes. I told them video is so important because if we got transparency, then we can get accountability and then we can get to trust. And that's what it's about. And the blueprint is set now here in Memphis. I don't ever 
want to hear them say, Attorney O'Neill, that we got to wait a year, we got to wait two years, like, uh, you know, with Eric Garner and Tamir Rice. They can't say that anymore because the Tyree rule, the Tyree rule is 20 days. Start counting. When we see a video of the police committing a crime, whether it's white police officers or black police officers, that's now the blueprint. And we can't do this just when it's black police officers. We got to do this when any police officer brutalizes us. Tomorrow, does anybody want to say anything to that? About the families? Oh, so that's why I, I want to answer your question. That's why the families are so important because we got to show them these are not isolated incidents, that it is a systematic and systemic problem in America. Yeah, you know, just like uh, we stated many, many times, sister, every last one of them on that video need to be held accountable, whether they acted or whether they failed to act. Because, Sarah, isn't that just as important, your failure to act? All those officers on that scene, and they walked around like it was business as usual. And what that tells us, Pastor Brett, that tells us it's culture. It's a pattern in practice. That's our biggest case for pattern of practice. It didn't seem like it was any problem with what they had did to Tyree Nichols. It was business as usual. And we don't have scorpion units in the white neighborhoods. We only have scorpion units in the black neighborhood. And we got to speak truth to power to that. All right, couple. About what? So, they would have you believe that crime only happens in the black communities. Crime happens in the white communities. It is we disproportionately target black and brown communities. And black people, I believe, to proliferate the prison industrial complex. The statistics bear out that, you know, they take marijuana, for instance. There were many white kids selling marijuana as black kids, but the police slapped them on the wrist, but then they had these jump out boys, these scorpion units. In Atlanta, Mayor Bottoms told me they were the red dogs. I mean, ain't that right, Jamal? In every city in America, they got one of these organized crime units that trample on the constitutional rights of black and brown communities. And you know, his mother said Tyree was sent for an assignment. And we are trying to figure out what that assignment is. She says she believes there has to be some good that comes out of this. And maybe that's part of the good, that we're going to start calling out these organized crime units that only target the black community. I have never heard of an organized crime unit going to uh, brutalize our white brothers and sisters in their neighborhoods. Show us that video. You know, uh, I was talking with Congresswoman Sheila Jackson Lee. I know Senator Booker and uh, the family are scheduled to talk. Uh, President Biden uh, and Vice President Harris renewed their commitment to say we have to get this bill uh, made into law. And, you know, 
I guess the art of politics is negotiations. But what we want to see occur is there be enough substance in the George Floyd Justice Policing Act with the Tyree Nichols duty to intervene and the Breonna Taylor uh, prohibition against no-knock warrants to make it where it can prevent some of these hashtags, some of these unjustifiable killings. How many black boys got to be shot in the back running away and the police get to say, oh, I fear for my life, and the judge say, we grant qualified immunity? How many? And so I think it's going to be a negotiation, but I, I want to believe in my heart, as Reverend Al said during the eulogy, you know, the Civil Rights Act of 65 didn't pass overnight. It's a fight. You know, power concedes nothing without a demand. Last two. Here, man, then you're going to get the last one. If that was your loved one who was lynched by the police like that, would you believe that the family had a right to bring a civil wrong for death lawsuit? So of course, his family, his son, are going to have a lawsuit brought on their behalf. And it's going to be, as Attorney Ramanucci, and I did with uh, the George Floyd case, as we did with uh, Breonna Taylor, Randy Cox in Connecticut. It's going to show this pattern and practice of not just one officer, but multiple officers engaging in pattern and practice excessive use of force in violation of the fourth Amendment rights against unlawful search and seizure and the 14th Amendment rights for equal protection. I mean, it is so clear that Tyree Nichols, not just civil rights, but his human rights were violated. Last question. I just heard about it when the media heard about it, and, you know, the family is suspicious. They were suspicious from the beginning. Uh, you know, Attorney Doris and Attorney Turner here in Memphis, they are local attorneys. We're dotting every I, crossing every T, because like the vice president and I talked about, video cameras help give us transparency, and transparency plus accountability equals trust. If we see people in our community captured on video and they throw the book at us, arrest us and charge us immediately. But then when police officers do the same things to us and commit crimes and we don't see accountability, that leads to mistrust. So I pray that we get accountability, not just on Tyree, because it's a national case. But how about those other citizens in the community who said the Scorpion unit assaulted and battered them too? I mean, we got to have justice for all of us. That's what America say, liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Press at bencrump.com for any additional follow-up questions. Press at bencrump.com. Thank you.